Hello, and welcome to this Ethical Dilemma in Science, where we're going to take a look at why science requires consideration of ethical dilemmas. Uh, so looking at justice, equity, and inclusion in technology. Now, this is an ethical dilemma uh, that I was going to use uh, at the start of the next semester, the new semester in the spring, uh, to kind of explain what my goal is with these ethical dilemmas in science and why I have incorporated in my class, why I have made these available uh, on YouTube, potentially for other people uh, to use. Now, if we take a look at uh, this article from the New York Times in 1910, uh, peripatetic uh, philosophers of this many-sided uh, town. Uh, and so to start out with, we, we, we need to identify what is peripatetic. Uh, peripatetic is not peripathetic, it's peripatetic. Uh, this is a school of philosophy that was derived from Aristotle. Uh, and it's, it's based on the concept, or at least the legend, uh, that Aristotle would walk around while lecturing. And so I am very broadly interpreting uh, the peripatetic uh, philosophers uh, and Aristotle uh, to the need of public discourse uh, on a whole variety of topics. Uh, and it's just I'm focusing in on science and ethics within these ethical dilemmas, within these ethical dilemmas in science. Now, within the article, there's a quote that says, ancient Athenians were never content unless discussing some new thing. Uh, and so that's the goal of these ethical dilemmas in science, is to present you with some information so that you can consider new things, consider you know, how science impacts on society around us. Uh, and so I'm not trying to be a soapbox orator. I'm not you know, dragging out a soapbox. I'm going to stand up here and, and spout my ideas out and try to you know, convert everybody. Uh, I have my own political views. I have my own views on science. Uh, but I try very hard uh, to remain apolitical. Uh, my goal um, as a, a professor uh, is that we can disagree, uh, but what I want us to do is to disagree after we've had a thoughtful consideration of the evidence and alternative viewpoints and perspectives. And so it's fine to disagree if we've really considered what it is that is our viewpoint. It's not what we got off of social media or what we're hearing on the news or what you know we're pressured into thinking for whatever reason. Now, within human subject research, there's a concept of informed consent. Uh, informed consent is this idea that individuals that sign up to be subjects in a research study should be able to make their decision based on their own personal interests or their own personal autonomy. And so the idea of informed consent is this idea that they need to be able to learn about what is going to be going on in the study. Uh, and they need to be able to understand it. It's not enough to explain it in lots of jargon and a lot of words that people aren't going to understand. They need to be able to truly understand what it is that they're signing up for. They need to be able to consider, is this the best thing for them? Is this appropriate for me to volunteer for? Uh, and they should not be coerced into making that decision. Uh, and so my goals with these ethical dilemmas in science is to provide a form of informed consent as it relates to the use of science and technology. Now, just as a simple definition, uh, and again, I am oversimplifying this a, a fair amount, uh, but put it into kind of a broader perspective. In science, we are going to identify a, a gap. We are going to be looking at a gap in knowledge. We're going to be able to look at, you know, potentially a problem uh, that needs to be solved. So scientists will apply the scientific method, a way of looking at a question and trying to come up with answers, to learn more about that topic and potentially to come up with a potential solution. Ultimately, uh, the concept of technology is going to be the application of science in solving that problem or filling in at least a portion of that gap. Now, in between science and technology, we've got engineers. So this concept of engineering is basically converting that scientific knowledge into a practical application in the form of technology. Uh, and so we basically see that science, engineering, and technology all work together to address a problem that needs to be solved to address a gap in what is currently available. Now, there's an image that's uh, going around in social media showing uh, equity, equality, uh, and justice. 
uh, but it's October 2022. Uh, the Phillies are in the World Series. So I wanted to do my own personal slant on this same type of uh, uh, image that we've seen. Uh, and so celebrating uh, the 2022 World Series, currently one and one. Uh, Phillies lost last night uh, in a game that didn't go as long as the previous night. Uh, but here we have uh, the Philly Fanatic, uh, the Philly baseball team, uh, Philadelphia baseball team uh, mascot. Uh, here we've got Gritty. Gritty is the Philadelphia hockey team, the Flyers mascot. Uh, and over here we've got Swoop. And Swoop is the Philadelphia Eagles uh, football team uh, mascot. Uh, and so again, um, you know, my personal slant uh, on this. And so we're going to look at the situation where all three of these mascots want to watch the, the Phillies game at Citizens Bank Park to root on the Phillies to hopefully get a World Series uh, win. Uh, and so they've got this situation where they have an obstacle. They have a problem. Uh, there's a fence in the way. They can't see the game because of this problem that is addressing them. Now, in reality, uh, if we take a look at this problem, we may see that there's a situation where there's an unequal access to resources. So in this case, Swoop uh, is actually on a region of a hillside so that he can look right over the fence uh, and see the game. Uh, but uh, the fanatic and gritty down here, because of their situation, because of their position, are, are not able to see that. They have kind of an unequal access to the resources that are available. Uh, now, keep in mind uh, that these resources are not simply money uh, within a capitalistic economy, uh, but they may be other things as well. Sometimes these resources may be things like family connections, uh, opportunities that are available because of you know, potential connections and where you're at. Um, and sadly, sometimes these resources uh, and availability of these resources is different based on the zip code you live in or potentially the school district uh, where you're uh, going to school. So uh, we are going to apply science and technology, maybe a little bit of engineering to build these boxes, uh, but we're going to have a solution to this problem. Uh, and so the first approach is to give everybody equal access to this a problem solving uh, tool, in this case, to these boxes. So everybody's getting the same thing. It's nice and equal. Uh, so Swoop up here on the hillside uh, is able to uh, get up even higher. He can lean on the fence and he can yell and, sh and shout and cheer on the fills, uh, the Phillies uh, and all of that. Um, you know, he can see the game okay. Uh, the Fanatic over here, uh, that box is just enough uh, that he can sneak his eyes over it. Uh, can't really get the, the little uh, He's got a little blowout thing uh, that he uses uh, as he does his mascot thing. It probably can't get that to, to celebrate the Phillies hitting home runs, uh, but he can see the game. Gritty over here uh, has access to the same thing everybody has, so he has equal access to this technology, in this case a box, uh, but it's still not enough for him to be able to watch that game. Uh, and so in this case, equal access is, is not uh, an appropriate solution to the problem for everybody in this situation. So in this slide, uh, we are looking at equity. We are looking at basically providing what is needed. Uh, and that's not necessarily as giving the same thing to everybody. Uh, and so basically, uh, we're looking at over here, uh, where the Fanatic uh, is still on his box, and you can still see the game. Uh, Gritty over here now has two boxes, the equivalent of taking the box from Swoop, who didn't need it, putting the box over here, and Gritty can now see over the fence. And Swoop, uh, that didn't need uh, access to the box, is still able to see uh, the game. Uh, and so this is an example of e equity. Uh, and so different, um, different things available to different people based on their need, or different mascots in this case, based on their need. Uh, so not everybody is getting exactly the same thing. But ultimately, uh, the goal of science and technology is to remove that obstacle. In this case, we've removed uh, the fence behind this, uh, and everybody here, uh, the Fanatic, Gritty, uh, and Swoop, are able to see the game without any uh, impediment, without anything blocking their view. Uh, and so the, guy, uh, the, uh, the goal of uh, science and technology is to solve the problem. Uh, but keep in mind that the implementation of that solution again, may require additional resources that may or may not be equitably distributed. Uh, and so potentially eliminating the obstacle may introduce additional problems going forward. So uh, the reason I'm pulling this out now as opposed to with the start of a new semester uh, is 
we're in an incredibly uh, divided political environment right now. We're coming up to the midterms uh, a little bit, uh, about a uh, little less than two weeks, about 10 days now when I'm recording this. Uh, and we've got uh, politicians out there basically saying access to certain types of uh, technology, in this case, uh, abortion, and I try to avoid abortion within uh, the, the ethical limits in science just because it is such a polarizing issue. Uh, we've got uh, Mehmet Oz uh, running for Pennsylvania Senate uh, has taken a position that it is a local issue uh, and so access to abortion would be that of uh, between a woman, a doctor, uh, and her local politician. Uh, now what he said isn't exactly that. Uh, what he said uh, is I don't want the federal government involved with that at all. I want women, doctors, local political leaders letting the democracy that's always allowed our nation to thrive to put the best ideas forward so states can decide for themselves. Uh, but again, in this situation, it really illustrates this idea that we may not be able to make these decisions about science and technology for ourselves. We may not have the ability to make decisions about access to science and technology for ourselves or for, for others that may need it more than we do. Uh, and so it's important that we have these discussions, that we have uh, these ideas uh, and public discourse uh, about these ideas in order to make informed decisions about what aspects of science and technology should be available and how should they be available. Uh, and so if we take a look at this, again, recent news accounts, September 2022, uh, New York State, in an article in the Bloomberg uh, newspaper, uh, New York State implements 2035 all-electric vehicle plan after California clears the way. Uh, and so California earlier in the summer, New York now, uh, has this plan in which there will be no gas-burning vehicles uh, allowed for sale after 2035, roughly 15 years from now. Uh, and so that's a decision that affects many people. Uh, and so if you have uh, limited resources, how are you going to buy a car that's electric? Uh, hopefully in the next 15 years, the cost of electric cars is going to come down where it's comparable to what is a car now. Uh, but what about people that have to buy uh, used cars because of their, their current economic situation? Uh, if the electric cars are, are out uh, in 2035, what about those used cars? What about the used cars that are still using gasoline uh, to power their engines? Uh, over here uh, in Nature, uh, the journal, Science Journal Nature, uh, in June 2022, talking about the U.S. Supreme Court uh, decision uh, that the EPA authority over carbon uh, dioxide emissions to the uh, atmosphere uh, is not something that should be regulated. They should not be setting the limits for that. This is the decision that should be mandated by Congress. It should be uh, produced by the rulemaking mechanisms within Congress, by our elected bodies, as opposed to a governmental agency. Now that's fine. It, it's, it, it's a way to uh, solve the problem, but in a highly polarized and divided nation, how do we come to an agreement on what should those standards be? Uh, and so again, that again illustrates this difficulty that we have in trying to come up with uh, solutions to problems if we're not all taking a look at the problem, we're not all considering all aspects of the problems and potential solutions. Okay, so this gives rise to uh, the ethical dilemma in science. How do we ensure that the benefits and burdens of science and technology are distributed appropriately within society? Uh, and so that's the goal I have for each and every one of these ethical dilemmas in science. Uh, what needs to be done to provide accurate, reliable information about science and technology? To make sure that quality information is available to individuals that are looking for it without the, the misinformation and false facts, uh, false news, uh, fake facts, all of, the, all of that information uh, that is really clouding an understanding about what's going on. And it's gotten only worse with expansion of social media. How do we promote civil and substantive discussions of the topics that consider informed viewpoints? How do we promote these civil discussions on these topics where we are debating the issues and not attacking one another? And then finally, how do we ensure that the laws and guidelines are based on informed deliberation? You know, at a minimum, 
we need to vote to make sure that our elected officials uh, are representing our viewpoints. Uh, and in order for them to know what our viewpoints are, it may mean that we need to communicate more with our elected officials uh, to write to them, not just when there's a, an issue up for uh, vote, but in addition to that, uh, let them know what are the things that are concerning us, uh, especially when we're talking about uh, potential inequitable uh, or at least uneven uh, access to science and technology, uh, which basically says that we have problems that are not being solved uh, appropriately uh, across uh, society. So thank you uh, for listening to this week's Ethical Dilemma in Science. Uh, please see the description below for additional information and references. Thank you and have a great day.